Welcome to Film Flex Friday. I'm Linda Murray, along with my co-host, Whitney Jones. Hello. We have an exciting episode today. I'm really looking forward to it. Two professional IFBB competitors, IFBB Figure Pro, IFBB Fitness Pro. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the show. We're welcoming Larissa Rees and Tamia Marova. Welcome, ladies. Hello. Hello. Hi. Thank you for Thank joining, you. Us, joining us. <laughs> so you want to tell them what this show is all about? Because yes. you're a mom. Yes, I am a mom. And, you know, being an athlete in this sport and trying to compete, keep our physique, because let's, let's be honest, in this sport, our physique is what makes us relevant. But when you throw in pregnancy into that mix, it changes everything. For anyone who's ever had a child, you know that pregnancy changes your internal life, your external life, and everything about it. But it's obviously one of the greatest things and one yes. of the best gifts that you can ever experience as a woman. And we can't wait for the both of you to share your experiences as athletes as well as mothers. And we have tons of questions for you guys. But let's start first with Larissa. Um, let us know, you know, how many kids do you have? What are their ages? And then we'll switch off and kind of throw questions yeah. at each of you guys. Okay, so hello everyone, I'm Larissa Rice. Now I have two babies. My oldest one is two and a half years old, he's a toddler. And my second one, uh, his birthday is tomorrow, is one year old. Oh, wow. So, yeah, so two babies and I'm 42 years old. Oh. So that's important too. To yes, <laughs> yes. Very right? important. It yeah, really absolutely. is, because it's different when you're an, an older woman trying to have children yeah. and there's high risk that goes in, into that. And of course, too, it's hard because you're not 20, 25 years old like a lot of these others where that's kind of the standard age that people are having babies. So it's mm -hmm. definitely yeah. makes it a little more difficult. For sure, yeah. Uh, but I'm very happy, you know, I'm still working on my body. I will tell, I will tell you I'm not doing 100% what I should be doing. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, when you have two kids, it's, I, I, it's, it's hard, you know, yes. it, it is hard. Uh, I have to be like 100% just think about me and, and I can't right now. So I'm just waiting they both a little bit older so I can focus like 100% on me, you know, but of course, I have half percent of me right there. You know, yeah. I can't forget about myself and, you know, but it, it's hard. I'm, I'm still trying to figure it out my time, you know? I bet. Yeah, it's, it's not an easy balance, mm -hmm. that's no, for sure. it's not. And what about you, Tamia? Hello, everyone. My name is Tima Mayorova. I'm 46 years old. I have a four-year-old and an wow. eight-year-old who is going to be nine in a week. Um, mm. And uh, Larissa was right, that me time that we have before is just never the same and it will be never the same because, uh, you know, it's, it's the kids are first and when they're hungry and then when you feed them, they do want something else and then they ready to eat again. <laughs> I literally work out, you know, I literally working out when I put them to sleep at nine o'clock um, in my gym downstairs in the garage. Luckily, I created a gym now. So uh, it's really true that me that me time, you know, um, how I handle it, I tell you a little secret, which is another, another big secret. It's meditation, you know. I, wow. I literally put on meditation song. Um, sometimes, uh, luckily, my boy is right now, but once his daddy when, when boys turn four they all into that so my daughter she's really into me right now so she wants to be sleeping with me and my son wants to want to sleep with my his father so when when she when she falls asleep i actually stretch i put meditation song on and i stretch and i meditate and that's how we crash like mm. i really need that in the end of the day and i i'm almost doing it now every night Mm. Oh, that's a smart technique. I like that. <laughs> it's one way to, yeah, to sure. go about getting the you time while also still being a mom. 
Yeah. Is, yeah. So I guess uh, one a birthday is coming up. Uh, Larissa, you have a birthday for your your daughter. Yeah. You said will be yeah my son my, for your son tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow he's gonna be twelve twelve months. Uh, oh, wow. He's already walking since oh, last month. He's I already see. walking. He's a big boy. Okay. Oh, wow. um, so I'm excited. Uh, today we're gonna do like a little photo shoot for him with cake and everything. Oh, nice. Uh, so very exciting day. So it's only and been one year since one year. Right yeah. My second one. The yeah. second yeah. one. And being that they're my so close one. together, that actually throws in a whole lot of challenges because it's not like you have someone who's old enough where they can help. And yeah. there sometimes can be that sibling rivalry. Do you have that with your kids right now, Larissa? Uh, sometimes, uh, not not very much. They both still wear diapers. My daughter, she's just starting to, to pair train. Uh, I mean, she, she goes to the toilet when she's in the school. When she's at home, for some reason, she don't want to go to the toilet. It's just a, <laughs> a fight here, you know. And my son, of course, he's in, in the diaper. So I have two diapers kind of, you know, and it, it is hard. They Sometimes they don't want to share uh, toys, um, but She's sweet, you know, girls are usually very sweet, so mm -hmm. she understand and then you talk to her, we need to share, and then oh, she yeah. understand and she share, she kiss him all the time, you know, girls are very sensitive, so yeah, they both very different personalities. Oh, wow. fine. Yeah. yeah. Well, I want our audience to, to know that, um, I mean, you guys have been in this industry, both of you IFBB professionals, one in fitness and the other in figure. Um, you have a large following. Each of you international uh, fitness models, you've been on over like 100 covers. I know that for, with you, T Timia, and I know um, I see a, your post and I remember, I think with Larissa, when you, um, at some point, I'm not sure if it was like in 2016 or I'm not sure of the year, can't remember, but you took off as far as the following. I know on Instagram yeah. you have a large, large following. So yeah. the we all have an image. Um, you know, we see you, uh, we know what your physiques look like, and then you have to transition <laughs> from yeah. being that, that person, that IFB professional athlete and watch your body. So I want each of you to uh, give us um, some insight to what you experienced with your first pregnancy and transitioning from that um, international model competitor to going through that nine months of pregnancy. So let's start first, we'll start with you, uh, Timia. Yeah, so uh, I actually, um, I just quickly, I was so excited to be a pro athlete that I actually stretched it as long as I could. Um, <laughs> you know, I going to America and get a be the athlete, meeting all the pro world, it was so excited that I actually couldn't stop, you know, like it was mm. so excited, the traveling and all that other night in us be on stage. And I, I never forget, I turned 36 and I was like, I don't want to miss motherhood. Like that was such a big thing. Uh, I just didn't want it. I wanted that experience. And I remember thinking, um, I'm always hearing about you blow up and it's, you know, your body changes. And I was like, can I stay in okay shape while I'm pregnant? And it was kind of challenge myself and <clears throat> I had such a good experience with it. I had such a always great lifestyle because of competing for eight years that um, I just enjoy eating healthy. So all that theory from from grandmas like you need to eat for two, it's actually not true. Mm. You know, you need basically 300 more calories um, to eat more uh, and especially healthier you eat. That's healthy nutrition nutrients it's good for that baby so mm -hmm. to grow mm -hmm. um so i was just you know i exercised all my life and i actually was exercising and my belly was just growing i was all belly i was you know i'm i i i have to say i i love to lift heavy but when i was pregnant i basically slow it down a little bit i wouldn't train as intense and i would 
just do a little bit less weights and I would have a little bit like instead of doing high intensity, I would have like, uh, you know, 30 seconds or 40 seconds between sessions. And um, honestly, uh, I was all belly. I, I actually, mm-hmm. I never forget, I, I did a photo shoot with Bill and with other photographers and I still had the muscle mm-hmm. because I didn't want to lose the muscle. Also, I wanted to stay flexible. So I even stretched and it made me a happy mom. I think, mm. um, and they say also, if you pretty athletic and you work out and you have that kind of a lifestyle that you athletic and you do different sports and you work out regularly, you don't need to stop doing that. Mm-hmm. And and just watching what you eat, you I was already eating healthy, so I just ate, you know, two, 300 more calories. Um, I was cooking or uh, even if I would go out to eat, I always, I get used to it. You know, you have that in your, uh, that read on what you order. And I would have still my junk days once a week, <laughs> junk day Sunday, right? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and with both of my kids, I, 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 I basically gained the minimum. Uh, I was mostly water. So when I give mm. birth, it was i never forget it i i give birth um i lost the water weight i went for my checkup 10 days later and the nurse put me on the scale and i was at the same and they are like okay um we are mad now can you leave we can lose the <laughs> yes. weight. yes that is not fair like, that is not yeah, everyone that's, cute. that's great <laughs> you well, are definitely lucky <laughs> yes well when we re- yes. we're going to take a quick break and when we return We want to hear, Larissa, from you on what your transition was like from, you know, that nine month period when we return. And we're back with Larissa and Timia. Um, we were stuck with you, Larissa, and we were talking about uh, the transition that you had to go through from your fit body without the baby then the nine months of pregnancy. So share that with us. Yeah, first of all, I think it's important to say that I, I planned my pregnancy. So I, I really mm. want to be pregnant. I was old, you know, older. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I competed for 12 years of my life nonstop. Mm. Uh, it was a big time of my life, right? Competing and dieting and traveling was, was my, my dream come true for sure. Everything that happened to me as a IFBB pro athlete and everything that I, I, I got from that, you know, was really a dream. And and after this is done, I was like, okay, I, I need a family. I lost my mom and dad, they both had cancer mm. and I'm the only child. So wow. I was like, okay, it's time for me to, <laughs> to mm-hmm. why I'm working so hard for, you know, for my dogs, um, I, I really wanna have a family. So. Mm. Finally, I found somebody, right? You need to have somebody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, finally, I found somebody the same uh, set of mind that want to have a family too, and we both the same age, and and that's it. So we planned it. It was was uh, we had two miscarriages uh, mm-hmm. trying my first pregnancy, but after that it was fine. A lot of people ask me, how can you? You know, they think I can't be pregnant because I guess. We look so lean, you know, uh-huh. competing and all that. <laughs> they think you can't be pregnant. No, I get pregnant really easy. I had no problem. I just had to miscarriage because I'm old mm-hmm. and my progesterone levels was really low. So I guess every woman after 35 years old, they need the progesterone, you know, because otherwise you can't have a, you can't have a baby, you can't you know. So my doctor prescribed me some pro- progesterone and that's how you know, I'm, I maintain my pregnancy and my both pregnancies um, was with progesterone um, just in the first trimester. And then after that, it's it's fine. It was, you know, I, I really get really easy pregnant. I was like impressive. In my second uh, C-section, cause I had to have C-section in both. 
Mm. Um, um, they told I told them to connect my tubes because I said I can't have babies anymore. I'm done, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, just to a boy and a girl, and I'm happy. And yeah, it's it's a lot of change. Uh, my first pregnancy, I know it's, um, I was eating a lot. I was like, okay, I'm I'm pregnant. I'm gonna <laughs> eat, you know. And I was like, I I want to have an ice cream. I want to have this. I was bad you know because of, i was bad and then uh i gained weight of course i gained a lot of weight my first trimester i couldn't work out because i was uh throwing up all the time my first trimester in both pregnancy was terrible i was feeling like very bad so i only could work out in my second uh trimester and very slow and very like you know first time too you always worry about uh, you don't want to do anything wrong right mm -hmm. um yeah. and then in the second one i then I, I come back with my my body in six months my first pregnancy six months i was in very good shape i work hard very very fast and then my second one i changed everything i said okay now I, i'm a vegan now yes. uh, since since my second pregnancy i'm vegan uh totally vegan so he's whole fruit plant-based the whole pregnancy um i gained very little weight uh i was feeling much better much more much more energy of course because i was eating garbage in the mm -hmm. first one you know a lot of <laughs> yeah. processed food and yeah. sugar so my second i was feeling amazing i didn't have a depression as well because in my first I had mm. depression but i know it has to do with the food mm. um when you eat too much garbage, uh, it's, it's messed up with your mind, everything, you know, it's really bad for you. Mm -hmm. So in my second one, I had a totally different experience. And I was like, oh my God, how food, food is really medicine for everything in our lives. It's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And today my whole family is whole food, uh, plant-based. Of course, we still eat a little processed because it's impossible in this world today, but we try our best to be like minimal and if there is something processed we try to always read the ingredients make sure there is no fillers or toxins and yeah I'm, I'm like totally different than i was before i'm much more careful with my my food intake and, and my health instead of just my body like i used to be before mm. you know because i was young too i didn't know better so now I'm a health coach and um, I see the importance of uh, eating health mm -hmm. um, for everything, for your yes. well-being and also your body as well. <laughs> Well, yes. and for you, Larissa, since you had mentioned your first experience being pregnant, you, you kind of ate more than you probably did the second time and you gained more yeah. weight. How did that affect you in regards to your body image? I mean, you were an icon, you still are an icon, but everything was like based on how you looked on the outside. So yeah. how did you handle the mental aspect of gaining weight and not looking like the athlete that you were for all those years that you competed I back know. to back? Yeah, I mean, it was kind of difficult. I had uh, depression, postpartum depression in my first pregnancy. And I could believe because I never had depression my whole life, you know. And I was like, I think it has to do a lot with my food, of course. And also for my first experience, I never saw my body like that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what was shocking, but, you know, you need to work through and and that's what i did I, I just changed my diet you know and start to do more meditation and mm. things to calm me down and 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 live in the present because that's what happened we can't live in the in the past yeah because you get depressed right or that's you can't right. live in the future because you're going to be anxious you know mm -hmm. and depressed too they are both very linked mm -hmm. so i, I what I do now is try to be in my present moment and enjoy, right? Because before I was like three times a day in the, in the gym, my life was great, pictures, senator, traveling all over the world, you know, it was amazing life, you know, mm -hmm. it was a dream life. But inside I was like, I want a family, you know, and I had now a family and, and now my fight is to live in the present. That's what I try to do as, to, to be happy and present and not have depression or mm -hmm. not have anxious, 
So that's what I'm doing. Joy every month, every diaper, every pool in the diaper, Aww. every spry, everything. I, I find joy because I, I think that's what we need for, even if you don't have kids, right? We need to enjoy the present and be grateful for Absolutely. everything that we have. And, you know, always be grateful, yeah. I think I can relate to Larissa on that. She's from Brazil, I'm from Slovakia. And even though we were traveling around the world, I felt lonely sometimes because my family is all back in Europe. And I was just, the the thinking of missing motherhood i was so scared that literally i could go depressed over it so mm -hmm. um that that's very true that i'm just glad that i focused on my career for so long and like she was mentioning her babies are little right they they actually can go both of them at the playground like i just hit the point that i was able to do that like i actually have hard time right now because my daughter is going to be nine in a week. So sometimes she feels it's like the pre puberty and she would say things like, oh, that's baby stuff. Like she start being that way, <laughs> so, you know, and so we're going to the playground together and it's almost like sometimes now she wants to do something else and it's a fight or they used to watch movies together. And now she's like, no, I don't want to watch that. I want to watch something else. So right now, I'm, the last two months, I started dealing with these. So I actually, um, if I were to do it again, I would have them just a little bit closer, like like mm -hmm. Larissa did, because I see now it's a little bit crashing time and it's actually a lot of fight. So yes, I try to enjoy the moment sometimes. So now uh, I, I, I have to think, you know, okay, let's go downstairs. You can watch uh you know uh what maxwell likes you know his uh channels whatever disney and then charlie's one's spirit it's like a horse movie because she loves horses so she goes upstairs i'm like you can use my my bedroom we have three tvs i'm like so i have to think ahead what i'm yeah. gonna do because mm -hmm. now and, and sometimes it's it's like all starts happening and next thing you know it's like it's on yeah. <laughs> and i need to really figure it out and you know what some it's not always when they happy i always say they're very happy when they fight they fight i i have two brothers so i i try to think back and i want to smell the roses because i'm one day if these things i'm gonna miss them if they're gonna leave the house oh, so yeah. yes she's enjoying changing diapers i'm trying to enjoy little movies with them but you know it's really uh because it feel bad you know the years fly by i can attest to that because my boys are now one's hitting the teen years and it's like oh my gosh where's the time going mm -hmm. so and there's always gold in every age so you just have to really stop and enjoy mm -hmm. it but you know that's one of the benefits of motherhood and mm -hmm. it's such a, a fun time Definite crazy times too, but you got to enjoy it. And you guys both have such an amazing perspective on it. Yeah, Whitney, you pointed out to me that as far as your career, you had your children first and then your career came after. Yes, it was almost for me because my boys, I have two boys and they're 15 and 12. So my oldest just turned 15. Lots of birthdays around here right now. Mm -hmm. But I didn't start my career into this industry until I was 33. And so my boys were already born and I, you know, there's a lot of women out there right now who are trying to make that decision where they're at the pro level, they're doing great. Do they stop, have their families, and then get back to competing? Mm -hmm. So you guys had your babies after your careers were over. Mm -hmm. I had mine before my career, but there's plenty of women who are in the mix right now. And I think mm -hmm. that's one thing for both of you guys, I would love to hear, number one, do you think being an athlete and being in shape helped your pregnancy? And on the flip side, do you feel like it helped you to get your body back? So let's start with you, Tamia. So absolutely. Uh, I I actually, I remember I, I the same, I, I planned it out, like Larissa said to you, when you get that age, 35, 36, you really want to plan it out. And and I did have one miscarriage, I, I can't forget. It's interesting, and I had to have C-section. It's interesting that 
we work out so hard and we lift weight. I, I thought that, oh, I, I just pushed this out easy. I have abs. <laughs> and I see that us and the doctor actually told me, like, actually, I see athletes having uh, difficulties a little bit. It's almost like um, at the time the muscle didn't help me. Mm -hmm. um, when I was pregnant, the doctor said something interesting. I, I basically, I couldn't, uh, I was ready to go and I opened number seven and you need to be 10. And I, I couldn't get there because the epidural slowed down um, everything for me and the heartbeat. So I had an emergency C-section um, and I was in great shape and I actually worked out hard, but not necessarily that helps to the birth. Mm -hmm. um, Mm. But so, but you, but you end up having C-section. I, I recovered very quick, thankfully, because I was in great shape. Yeah. So it's very relative, you know. I think it's genetics also. But I, I, I made sure I'm in shape before because also it helped me recover. Uh, I healed faster, and um, I also I was able to work out five weeks after. Um, I, I felt um, for for my mental state, I I have that in me that if I'm out of shape, it affects me mentally. Mm -hmm. And for me to make goals and plan ahead, I need to feel strong because it keeps me positive in other things mm -hmm. like planning and being for positive sure. in everything else. Mm -hmm. So I literally, when it's around the holidays, I would gain a couple of pounds, but then I watch it. I, I don't let it go more than four or five pounds just because I know that it affects me then, you know, I literally, I can be, in, I'm, I'm not in good mood. And uh -huh, sure. so uh, my mental strength, it's um, when I'm physically in shape, I'm mentally in shape. It really, that's how it is for mm -hmm. me. So um, after I, after my boy was born, I, I, I started working out. I, I was lucky that um, what I was, I would do, I would just work out with them. You know, I would have a harness and I would have Maxwell there and I would go for a power walk. And, you know, my daughter was already ready to go on a bicycle or I had a bicycle. Um, I had a front seat for Max. He was, you know, eight months old. That starts eight months old. You can use the front seat. And I had a back seat for my daughter. So literally they were like, I had like extra 30 pounds with yeah. the kids. <laughs> and that was my workouts to in mm -hmm. the beginning, right? Mm -hmm. To get also the cardio. Mm -hmm. And then I would do it in the evening if some energy left. I would yeah. do some squats or something, right? But that's a great <laughs> idea. I mean, it's a good way to get your workouts, your cardio in, and also include the kids and set that example. Now, Larissa, with yours being younger, I know the yeah. baby you probably can't do a ton with, but how about with your daughter? Do you incorporate her in some of your like workouts, training, just so you can get some <clears throat> time for you? Uh, I definitely I can do that with her. She's really on go crazy on me um <laughs> she's very hyper my daughter so i i can't i can't get any workout with that maybe with the baby when he was younger now he's walking all over the house i can't i i i can't so what i do now is um like she said you know everybody's different uh, i had two c-sections not because i wanted because my doctor uh said i have to because they were late so they both were very late like 10 days late oh, wow. and they said if you don't take out and then they tried to scare you you know um i don't know i i, I was crying because i really want to have a, a natural birth mm -hmm. um but the doctors mm -hmm. they scare you so anyway i i had to go through what she said because i didn't want to lose my baby you know and that's my experience wasn't that happy the way i planned it mm -hmm. both of them um i guess they look at you too because you're older they they think you're not able i guess i guess mm -hmm. i don't know mm -hmm. because you're more than 35 years old you know the doctors see you differently sure even though they don't know your history right you're not were an athlete mm -hmm. your health you know your whole life your health but they don't care but anyway they both came very uh healthy and everything what i do i go to the gym and in my gym uh, now the gym is open uh they have a, a, a care 
for babies. So I can work out for two hours so I can get my workout. And also I go to another gym too, very early, like 7 a.m., uh, 6.30, 7 a.m. to do one hour workout and I'm done for the day. Uh, so I have two options, you know, to do something more like yoga, things more nice in the gym, and the other one is more like CrossFit style. Mm-hmm. But for me, I had a problem with my, my pregnancy too, because after the doctor said, okay, you're ready to go work out. So in our mind, we're like, okay, I'm great. I feel great. I'm going to do everything, right? And then I start to do boxing, everything, you know? And I, my, my, I had diastasis, and I didn't oh. know about that. A lot of women doesn't know about diastasis, and and it's really bad because you you injure yourself because your abs is still have the separation, mm-hmm. and you have to work the separation first, mm-hmm. doing low impact exercise, and then when it's closed, and then you can come back to do what you used to wow. do, right? And a lot of Uma doesn't know that because nobody tells you. And I had to learn in a hard way, damaging myself. Yeah. And and now in my second, I still have my diastasis. A lot of workout I can't do, like crunches, you know, I still can't not do yet. But I incorporate others, you know, like plank and other, other ones. Yeah. So you just need to really know uh, about diastasis so you don't get worse in pain, you know. And that brings up a good point. I think a lot of women too, because as if we're athletes, you know, it's like as soon as we've been down and out for a little bit and they're like, you can get back at it. Yeah. We don't ease into things. Yeah. It's like we go yeah. from zero to 60. We want to pick up right where we left off. And our bodies just aren't capable of doing that. And it's a big thing. No. People say, well, what is that? That's where the abs split. And you probably have seen women in the gym or maybe, um, yeah. you know, just around that have that big separation Separation. in their abdominal wall Mm -hmm. and that's because in pregnancy your abs get weak and they can split especially if you go a little too Mm -hmm. hard so that's a great tip you've got to listen to your body you You have have to try to to ease into it because you don't want those setbacks yeah Yeah, because doctors they don't going to tell you about Mm -hmm. diastasis unfortunately so you need to research and do your own thing you know and a lot of personal trainers too they don't know what they're doing yeah um so you really need to to look at and and learn or get somebody who really knows and and do your own okay i have one last question for for each of you um you know with the with your physiques and the image that you you have out there um was it challenging um to make the transition from having that image and the perception that people have of you into um, being a mother and just really kind of like letting go and not worried about having a a waistline that's a 22 or 24 or or concerned with um, just that physical transformation and your fans and them seeing you in that light. At what point were you just like, okay, I'm letting go and just enjoying and being in the present and really enjoying my life and being a mother. Let's start with with you, Temia. Um, That's a good question uh, because I really, really loved my years of competing and uh, that was all I was dreaming about as a girl, and and when I find it was it was for me not having even good gyms uh, in uh, like in America uh, you guys had in Slovakia. We I literally had to took a train to go to the gym. When I really reached that dream, actually it was so hard to stop. Uh, um, I never forget my. The Arnold or the Olympia that the last time when I did it, it, it was really hard. Yet the hunger of being a mom, it was so overwhelming. And because I did miss, I, I had to deal with the loss of family. So it was this, my two brothers, my grandma, my mom, I love them so much. Yet the hunger 
to reach my dream was so big that I had to come and reach my dream. And then when I stopped competing, I f then when it hit me to missing family because they were not here. So for me, actually, um, I was ready for it. Yeah. Because I felt lonely. Yes. Uh, I, I get to the point where I miss my brothers. I miss my mom. We were just on Skype. Um, I, I saw my all my girlfriends having kids. So I, I literally I started being so sad and lonely. And um, I really uh, it, it was ready. I, I was ready and I wanted to make it in a way that like I said, if I would have gained so much weight and I would be like very heavy and I would have to, I was worried to that I will have to need to deal with that because I know how much important for my mouth, mental health is being in shape. I, I was actually, that's why I always watched my eating because I have my sweet tooth. I have it in the family. Europeans, they all love French bakery. Like uh -huh. I can live on it, right? <laughs> So I, I, I experienced sometimes when I would eat with, you know, grandma or with mom, the cappuccino with the, with the French bakery for a while. I see I can gain weight too. You know, sometimes <laughs> people joke like, oh, you always lean. Yes, but I have to, I have to, yeah. I work it, right? Yeah. So yeah. Uh, at that point, uh, because I reached really my dream, actually it was another dream to be mom. So it actually let it go was easier than actually let go physically competing mm -hmm. because physically competing that adrenaline rush on the stage in the Olympia and Joe Weider is watching like it's nothing like that and a couple thousand people like that was harder for me let go than than welcoming motherhood was basically mm -hmm. a new right. chapter that I wanted to yes. experience I see and what about you Larissa the same thing I, I i lost my family my my mom and my dad and uh, that was the time that was like okay that's the time i need to do my family otherwise i'm i'm done right and and came in the right time everything in my life came in the right time i was like so amazed by that you know uh, i didn't rush anything everything happened you know and I was happy with everything. And yes, about my body, I was like, okay, my first pregnancy, I was in joy. I wasn't being a good girl. But at the same time, I wasn't so worried because I know when I start to focus on my body again, I will get there, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I did for 12 years. So I was, um, I was enjoying my pregnancy, let's okay. say that. I was really enjoying my pregnancy and eating everything, my first one. And then the second one, I start to be more restricted. And yeah, I, I'm still working on my second one. After one year, I still not where I want to be. Mm -hmm. But I know it's because I'm not being the best in the gym as well, mm -hmm. you know. And um, it's just time and priorities right yes. now. Um, you know, it's just priorities. So I, I'm, I'm not overweight, but I'm not like super shape yes um you know i'm i'm just there normal i guess average yes. <laughs> you know? well you guys are, but, it's um i think the thing that's really beautiful about this is we can see that you're at peace and you're enjoying life and i think you really made an excellent point um larissa and i also heard this from you timia is that being present, yeah. um, you're not, the past is it's over. You have, we had a great time. Doesn't mean that it can't be in yeah. our futures, but sure. it's really important to be present. And um, you guys are excellent examples. And most of our viewers, they want to tune in because they admire you and they, they've seen you on so many covers and they follow you. And to see you on social media, proud of your belly mm -hmm. i really that's what made yes. me come up and said i want to really check in and see what you guys are doing so thank you so much for sharing your stories and you've helped and inspired many women oh yes you guys were killing it as athletes and now you're killing it in motherhood and yeah. we appreciate you sharing our your story with us yeah 
So that's thank a wrap. We're so happy to do it. Yes, thank yeah. you to, to Larissa and to Timia, and good luck and congratulations and happy yeah. birthdays to Yes, this, happy birthday babies. week. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. That's right. awesome. Thank you. Thank you. And that's Bye -bye. a wrap. Another episode of FemFlex Friday with two hot mamas. Thanks again for joining us, guys.